Today, we are gonna talk about how to set up and safely use a ratchet strap. Now, ratchet straps come in many different sizes, weight capacities, lengths, and no matter what, even if yours doesn't look exactly like the one we have set up here, the components are essentially the same and the directions that we're gonna give you will apply, so follow along. First things first, there are two sections. You'll notice you have a section that has the ratchet itself and some kind of a connector on the end, typically a hook. You're gonna use that to attach to a secure point, and this is gonna be a necessary step for setting up your ratchet. Now, on the other end of things, you have open-ended strap or webbing, and then you're gonna have another hook or connection of some kind. You're also gonna to wanna to attach that to a secure connection point. First things first is you wanna untangle this so that you can make sure you get a clean feed into the ratchet. What I do is I place it between my thumb and my pointer finger, and I'm simply gonna pull it through. Now it's okay that it's ending up in a pile again on the other end. Trust me on this, but when you set this down like that in front of your ratchet, as long as you feed it through that way, you're good to go. So in terms of a couple components of a ratchet that are important to understand. The ratchet itself you know, has to do with these teeth here. There's these things called pawls that grab onto those teeth in various ways as you're using it. The other thing that you're gonna have is a release mechanism that you will use once you've built tension on your ratchet strap. And you have here probably one of the most important parts is called a windlass. Now the windlass is actually the spool, if you will, that you're gonna put the webbing around and that is what is gonna hold onto that line once it goes through there. To start with, we actually wanna get this opening in the middle to be kind of parallel. So when you have it straight up and down, this is the best way to do it. So this is the most important part. You're gonna feed the open end of the other half of the strap from the backside through the front. Now what I do is I hold it here and I kind of just pull the line through my hand. One more way to make sure that it's straight. And I'm gonna pull it all the way through. And this is the number one thing where people go wrong is they wanna just pull just a little bit through and start to apply pressure on the ratchet. That is actually the number one way that you get a ratchet to be frustrating and not work is because there's, uh, there's too much webbing around the windlass. So now you wanna have a slight amount of slack in here you're gonna hold on to the webbing and you're gonna to begin to apply tension by pulling up this ratchet. Now you can see as I start to do that, this webbing is starting to build around that windlass. It typically takes about three full cranks to get one full revolution. That is the minimum amount of webbing that you want around here and ideally somewhere between two and four full revolutions around that, that windlass. Uh, any more than that, and you can run into a situation where it will bind and block the pawl from working properly. So once we've built this tension, you can see that this has become taut. You just want to push this ratchet down to the bottom location. And this is actually it. You are done in terms of getting this ratchet to have the tension and be able to secure a load down. The only other thing we need to do is we need to find a way to take care of this loose webbing, also called a dog ear, is that can cause legal issues and safety issues. So one of the things you can do is kind of turn the webbing over itself and just kind of wind it up like this. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but the idea is to get it pretty neat and orderly here and get the extra webbing in a single location where you can secure it so that it does not become a safety hazard. The next thing you're gonna do is to use a zip tie. You can get zip ties for a couple bucks for a hundred pack at Harbor Freight very easily. And this way you can securely lock this down so it's not gonna go anywhere while you're transporting. You are now ready to travel once you have secured this extra dog ear. Now, once you arrive, when you get to your location and you wanna undo the load, you're gonna notice that you can't pull this up because you've built all this tension. So this is where the release mechanism comes into play. You're gonna lift it up you're gonna notice that you're gonna come all the way up to here, which is where you were stopping before when you were building tension. Now you're gonna pull it up and keep going. You hear that pop? That means that you've released it. So I can come here and remove this zip tie, just throw the extra webbing over there. And now that I've released this and I wanna have this uh, handle basically flat, I now can fully pull this line back through and start to feed it back through and you no longer have tension on the line. 
So now you can pull it all the way through, undo your load, and you are done.